Welcome to another edition of Visual X Masterclass with me, Smusi Sokanyile. We want to tackle our paper two today, which is of course a topic called statistics or data handling. It's the section where we should be collecting maths because it is easy, especially if simplified. What is statistics? I believe in definitions because definitions will give you an understanding of what you are doing. Uh, statistics or data handling is the field of mathematics where we deal with collecting, analyzing, organizing and interpretation of data for a particular reason. For example, if the government wants to know how are they going to distribute its finances, Statistics South Africa will, will be coming into your houses to check how many people are working, how many people are still going to school, how many people are elderly, so that when they distribute uh, the, 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 the finances for different uh, departments, they will know exactly, uh, at least the estimate on, on, on how the population look like. So it is important that statistics is one of the important factors even in our government. There are certain terms that we use in this section like data. What is data? Data is the information that has been collected. Raw data, it is that, from that information that has been collected before we, 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 we organize it, analyze it and interpret it. We interpret it in different ways. We can either use graphs, bar graphs and other types of graphs. Population, population is the field where data has been collected. For example, if I want to do a research in Lamontville, I will come to Lamontville Township, then Lamontville will be the population where I get my data from. Then the sample, what is a sample? Uh, a sample is, is, is a small group of that population, but that small group must represent the aspiration of that particular population. So if, if I'm selling fat cook, for example, I've got a, a, a big bucket of fat cook and I give you one uh, fat cook for you to taste as a sample of how this all these other uh, fat cooks taste in this packet. We call that a sample. It's a small pop. It's, sm it's a small group of that population, but it should represent the aspirations of that population. In this section, we'll be doing, dealing with both grouped and ungrouped data. By grouped data, it's where we'll be doing doing our graphs like histograms and bar graphs, where we group our information. Suppose we said people from ages between 10 and 20, that's a grouped data. But when I say the ages of learners is 20, 30, 40, 15, so that's not a, a grouped data. Now I want us to go straight to uh, measures of central tendencies. We use this from as early as grade 8, but it comes out into our grade 12. The question, what is mean? A mean is nothing else but the average. It is the average. And there is a symbol that we use for this average. We call it the X bar. This symbol, symbol means average. X bar is the symbol that we use to represent the average. What is, how do you calculate the average? For example, if you are writing a test of, of 30 learners, to find the average mark of these learners, you take all their marks, you add them together, and you divide it it by the number of these learners. So that's what an average is. So it is the sum, average is the sum of all the observations divided by the number of them. This is the formula we use to calculate the average. Remember that sign there, the sigma notation, is the same sign that we see in, uh, to produce this in, in, in number patterns when we're dealing with the sum. So this sign simply means the sum, sigma notation. Number two, the second measure of central tendency is median. What is median? Median is the middlemost observation after the data has been arranged in an ascending or descending order. You can't find a median if you have not arranged the data. In other words, if you have not organized your data. That's one of the things that we do in, in, in statistics. We organize our data. So to, for me to find a median, I must uh, organize my data either in an ascending or descending order for me to find the median. Let's make an example. Let's suppose it is much more easier if my data is odd, for example. Let's deal with the odd data. 
uh, let's give it a seven, two, three, five, uh, eight, one, two, three, four, five. Let's look at this data. Can I be able to find the median in this data? Yes, but what is the first thing that I need to do is to organize this data in an ascending or descending order. Number one, which is the smallest here, it is two, followed by three, followed by five, followed by seven, then followed by eight. This is my data. If, what is the median? Median is the middlemost observation after the data has been arranged in ascending or descending order. Let's arrange it. Let's find the median. You've got to come from both ends and you'll see the middlemost. This is the middlemost. From there, I move in, I move in. I found my median. In this particular case, my median is five. But if I did not arrange this data in this order, I was gonna get the wrong uh, median. Let's, let's watch. I move, I move, I move. I will think my median is three, but it is not three, it is five. Once you arrange it, it becomes easier to find the median, especially if your data is odd. Now, what do we do if our data is even? If our data is even, this is what we do. Let's take an example of an even data. Let's, let me use the same data that has already been arranged. It's two, three, five, seven, eight, ten. Let's look at this data. This one is even. How do you deal with data that is even, that is even if we are looking for the median? You do the same thing. You move from there. It's one, two, ah, three. This is the two because the data is even. You add this two, you divide by two to get your actual median. Right, let's move, move on to the third measure of central tendency, which we call the mode. What is the mode? A mode is the middle mode, I mean a mode is the observation that appears the most in that particular data. A mode is the observation that appears the most in that particular data. Let's make an example to understand what a mode is. If I've got one, I've got three, I've got five, I've got four, I've got three, I've got six. This is my data. What is the mode of this data? You look at the data that appears the most. In this particular case, it is three. So the mode of this data is three. But at times you can find two modes. We call that data bimodal. If I can have four again here, you'll see that the mode will be three, three, Four, four. So this data will be bimodal. So that's what a mode is. I want us to go further to look at measures of spread or measures of dispersion. This is where we'll be talking about, we'll be doing calculations on this as well. This is where we'll be talking about standard deviation. This is the symbol for standard deviation and this is the formula for to calculate the standard deviation. How much the data is deviates away from, from the mean, standard deviation. We'll be doing more questions on this as well. It's the sum of the first observation minus uh, x bar, the average squared and so on until you finish all of them, until you go to the last one. That's what a standard deviation will do problems to, to clarify more on standard deviation. Variance. A variance is where you square your standard deviation. So a standard deviation squared is the variance where this is no longer applicable, the square root sign. Range. You'll be talking a lot about the range here. It is in your five number summary, you'll take your maximum minus the minimum. That's what a range is. There's something that we called uh, interquartile range. That's where we say we take the, 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 the Q3 minus Q1, that will give us the interquartile range. We'll talk about Q1s and Q3s when I talk about uh, the, the five, sub, five number summary with, with you. Then the semi-quartile range is the interquartile range divided by two. In other words, it's Q3 minus Q1 all over two. You'll understand now what we mean by Q1 and Q2 in the next session where I deal, well, I'll, I'll be dealing with the five number summary. Because these Q1s, Q2s and Q threes comes up in this part called the five number summary. The five number summary is another way of interpreting our data. It will, sh it will move us straight to what a section called box and whisker diagram, box as well as the whiskers, just like the whiskers of the cat. 
here you look at your observations you take the number one will be this the smallest or the minimum how do you find the minimum we just use your eyes you look at the smallest observation in the data number five will be the biggest or the maximum the biggest observation will be number five in in in, in our five number summer uh, number two will be our q1 our lower quartile let's call it lower quartile this is referred to as q1 lower quartile is nothing else but q1 how do you find q1 there's a formula that we use to find q1 it is equals to 1 over 4 into n plus 1 but this q1 will give us the position of q1 then i'll go to the data and if it is position 5 i'll 1 2 3 4 5 will be my q1 in a data uh, uh, let, let's move on to the to number two number number three we said that we've got lower quartile we've got uh, that that is q1 then we've got what you call uh, uh, q2 q2 is equals to uh, 2 over 4 into n plus 1 of course this is still how to find the position of q2 we said it's q1 which we refer to it as lower quartile then there is q2 which we refer to as the median q2 is also called the median then we've got what we call q3 the formula to find the position of q3 is 3 over 4 into n plus 1 this is how you find the position of Q3. Remember, this is still as 1 over 2, which will give us half, which is called to the median. So Q3, it's 3 over 4 into n plus 1. Then last will be the, 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 the maximum. Remember that at times Q1, 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 this one, is sometimes referred to it as, as the 25th percentile. Percentile. Uh, Q2 is referred to as the 50th percentile. Uh, Q3 is referred to as the 75th percentile. So don't, don't, don't get confused when we change names into percentiles. 25th percentile is Q1. But at times we'll be talking about the upper 25th percentile. It's no longer the lower quantile. When we talk of the upper 25th percentile, we're talking of Q3 there, which is normally the 75th percentile. So we refer to it as the upper 25th percentile. Now this will, 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 will after drawing this, after getting all these observations, we'll be able to draw our box and whisker diagram. This will be the minimum. Uh, I'm just going to make an example of a box and whisker diagram. This will be the minimum. So the minimum value that you got there will be part of your first whisker. The maximum value the, this side, the maximum will be the part of your second whisker. Uh, let me just put something here. Okay, let me put my data this set. Uh, this will be Q1. The position of Q1 will be here. Q2 will be here and Q3 will be there. Of course, you must have your number line down to find these values and put them accordingly here so that you can see how your box and whisker diagram, whether it is skewed to the left or skewed to the right. Thank you.